Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. A and T family. Let me know in the emoji with an emoji in the chat how you're doing, how you're feeling. Last day of seek first. Last day to push. Hallelujah. Shake it up. What's answered? Dub. Bim, flames, Tamika, hands. I love it. Um, Tony, I think that is like, I don't know what that, that face is, Sha, but it's something. I get it. <laughs> Echo, yeah, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touched. I'm guessing that is Steph. Ore. Curious. Um, hallelujah. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. On our last day of um our time of um prayer and fasting, just as we were praying, I feel like today is just you know literally closing out on you know what has been said. Um, I just really sense that. Like, as we were just praying now, God was just divinely empowering us. For some of you, um, the fast doesn't end today, it continues on Monday. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, the standard, like God has had you in, in this time, like the consecration that he's been doing still stands, it still remains, right? Whether there's an elimination of food or not. And so today I just really sense in my spirit, just some key things for us to pray into. PA is here as well. Um, so he's going to also... Good morning, saints. Good morning. Um, he's going to share as well. But I literally only have two, two prayer points, and I think it's important also to um, for us all to also share, um, to also share... Um, what has been on our hearts as we've been praying in the spirit, whether it be a scripture or a particular word, but I'm going to go to second Timothy chapter two, verses 22. When I woke up this morning, the Lord laid this, these, this scripture on my heart. You're going to see verse 24 in there, but oh no, you shouldn't actually just 22. Um, this morning when I woke up, he put this scripture in my spirit. Um, and, um, I just sense that it's a word for the church, for the church. Hallelujah. God is so kind. Hallelujah. Um, second Timothy chapter two, verses 22. It says, run from anything, this is the NLT version, I believe, run from anything that stimulates, hello, youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Wow. Wow. Uh, amplified classic says shun youthful lusts and flee from them and aim at and pursue righteousness all that is virtuous and good right living conformity to the will of god in thought word and deed and aim at and pursue you see those key words aim at pursue faith love and peace, harmony, and concord with others in fellowship with all Christians who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. Says NLT says, run, run for cover, run from anything that stimulates, hello everybody, stimulates, that arouses, that triggers, um, that puts pressure on you um, to pursue or to go after youthful lust. So it's not just the lust itself, it's anything, anything around, anything that could serve as an indicator 
Run from it. Hallelujah. Run from it. That word lust is um, at its root is desire, craving, longing, desire for what is forbidden. My gosh, that which is forbidden, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it speaks for itself. People of God, run from it. For run, run. Just for everyone put run in the chat. Run, run. You might have to put the running emoji in there. Run from it. Any appearance of it, any scent of it, any idea of it. Run, 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 run. Move away. Get away. Hallelujah. What could that, everyone put it in the chat. What could that look like? What could that look like in terms of youthful lust? What could that look like? What what could that lust look like? What could you run from? What could it could like? It could be a conversation, but put it in the chat. Just anything that comes to mind. What could one run from that stimulates? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. 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 The TV show songs slander mm. <laughs> a lot of songs in here, baby. True mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. jokes, yep. Yeah. My God. Mm. Mm. People have said crude jokes, people, conversations, music, songs, slander, the tea, shows, <laughs> sexual scenes in movies, gossip. <laughs> so, rap beef. I mean, <laughs> amen. A amen, you know. <laughs> amen. Excessive eating. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. PA was talking about the loss of the flesh, loss of life. Mm, loss of the mind. flesh, loss of the eyes, loss the of pride the, of life. And the pride of life. What could that look like? We need, we, if we're going to talk about it, we need to make it practical. My gosh. Certain supermarket hours, my gosh, wow, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, you're not even playing games this morning. Idleness, my gosh, idleness, idleness. Hmm. She, hallelujah, new age, wow, wow, wow. Someone said, bro, your old friends that used to do the crazy things with and have memories with, my gosh procrastination hallelujah yeah we often um underestimate what procrastination um what's what's the saying that they say in the world that the devil gives work for idle hands <laughs> yeah that's what they say that's what <laughs> that's what they yeah entertaining lustful thoughts and fantasies wow 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 yeah everything everything that everyone's saying yes Books, but talk about it. Books, books that have those those chapters. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the novels. Mm. Depending lots of thoughts and fantasies. Mm. Wow. Mm. Fantasies. Mm. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, I know we often like um mm. sexualize um when we talk about loss as well, we sexualize it. But also, like, I was talking with, um, we, we, we were at our friends and we were talking about certain TV shows that have, um, like, murder in them and, like, just lots of, like, things in them. Like, and it's like, raw. this is dark, you know? Like, this, uh, this is really dark, babe. Do you get what I mean? Like, yes. raw, like, my spirit. And you know what? Whatever you you expose your spirit to it's going to desensitize over time you know what i'm saying like so things that things that perpetuate wickedness wicked ideas wicked evil thoughts as well that allow you to fantasize like on you understand all of a sudden like you're just on you're just on everyone <laughs> you know what i mean or even um, what's this thing? The things that it, it it it's just fantasizing, but outside of this as well, um, things that uh promote fear in your life. You know, there's some people that um that love watching scary movies, don't understand it, but you know, <laughs> run from this obsession to know your ancestors. It's true, you don't you, you don't need to know about go back a hundred years and stuff. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah so um you know it, it it you know all of these things for some people is not a bad is not the mo it's not a bad thing it's not sin for them do you get what i mean but remember we said that the way that god deals with us is like like our unique walk like our unique journey so i can't look at what you know hillary is doing and say well you know i'm allowed to know everyone must live guarded everyone must live guarded hallelujah so the scripture speaks about running from anything that stimulates anything that stimulates youthful lust it says instead pursue righteous living Mm. Babe, that's what it says, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it says that. Pursue righteous living. That means, remember yesterday, we spoke about life in the spirit. Oh. And remember I said life in the spirit is a life of obedience. And I'll add this, a life of obedience is the key to experiencing freedom. Amen. Right? And so we have to understand this, that, that we always have to position ourselves in a posture of pursuing what is right in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. What is right? Righteous living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faithfulness. Hallelujah. Being faithful to the things of God, being faithful to his instructions, being faithful to those who you serve with, being faithful in all that is necessary that needs to be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love and peace. We should be in pursuit of these things. Hallelujah. And then it says, which I find interesting, Enjoy, everyone put enjoy in the chat. That's the word, babes. Enjoy. That is the word. Enjoy. My gosh. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord yeah. with pure hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, no, Pilates is fine, guys. It's just, yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> just thought to so it's enjoy the companionship of the, the companionship, the fellowship, hallelujah, of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. We're not just talking about the people that are lukewarm here. Hello, people of God, that 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 everything is permissible for them hallelujah but we're talking about people that call upon the lord with pure hearts that desire him that are in pursuit of him that are on fire for him that are that un listen we want to enjoy hallelujah enjoy 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 those that desire the Lord, Hallelujah! Those that are in are 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 are, are desiring, you know, His His grace, His power, His influence in their life, Hallelujah! Malarabasakaya, Yesterday we spoke a lot about um um we spoke a lot about friendship, spoke a lot about relationship, we spoke a lot about having people in your in your in your in your vicinity that can pray hallelujah mala raba sataya la raba sataya we spoke about having friends who are serious. Hallelujah. We spoke about exposing our hearts, our spirits. Hallelujah. To some of the other outside, the spirits that are not of God. Hallelujah. Because whether we like it or not, guys, there's no, it's not a coincidence that Paul, in the same verse that he's talking about running from anything that stimulates that he then tells us to enjoy the companionship or to be in the fellowship mm. with all who call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. So good. Because there is an understanding that our circle, our people have more of an influence on us than we even like to admit. Some of us have been living a life of peer pressure. 
peer pressure, peer pressure, scared. And you know what? Some of that root is the fear of rejection, um, a desire to belong. And this is why, you know, I've realized, you know, even with my own struggles, not just with, with people, um, but just in general, in terms of even calling an assignment, a lot of it had to do had had a lot to do with rejection, abandonment, belonging, and so we keep ourselves. That's what was spoken in the in Jude, I believe. Keep yourselves in the love of God. In the love of God, it's not that you know. I, it's not that those feelings or that desire to belong or that did that FOMO. Hallelujah. At FOMO won't come about, but it's it's the it's the understand, it's the um diligence to pursue. Even here it says pursue love. We have to keep ourselves in the love of God. And you know what? Even keeping ourselves in the love of God is what guards ourselves from us at any point feeling that we are distant from God just because of what we may struggle with. Hallelujah. And so this morning, hallelujah, I want us to pray. Mm. Lord, give me the grace to pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. May I always call on the Lord. We're just praying scripture here, guys, you know. And if we're praying the word, we're praying his will. Hallelujah. May I always call on the Lord out of a pure heart with those that honor you. Some of you may have to even add in there, Lord, um, give me the discernment mm. to identify the people mm. that should be in my life. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Reveal it to me. Yes, Father. Yeah. And some of us have to really be able to, um, uh, a simple, if you haven't let, um, read relational intelligence, and I do say that you should, but being able to categorize people appropriately, this is not a call for you to now be calling friends because some of us get so radical, like I can never be your friend anymore. No, that's guys. Don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Just do, we don't do that. It's not God say he's saying distance yourself. Yes. Consequence create yourself do you know what I mean until you're in a place where you're not even influenced or governed by the circle that you're a part of it's almost like widen your network widen your scope bring the people that you know um that desire the Lord closer do you get what I'm saying until you're at that place where that person's actions does not govern the way that I show up mm -hmm. you know I remember having a friend and that every time I was around her Every time I was around her, I would change how I am or how I, do you know what I'm saying? What I say or the types of joke, jokes that we would do. Why? Because I wasn't, I wasn't strong enough. Hallelujah. I wasn't secure enough in my, who I was and what I was trying to pursue um, to stand firmly in who I am. And so part of categorizing is uh, this, this one, that's, this this is an acquaintance. I see them, blah blah blah. These are close friends. These are my my prayer. These are my prayer warriors. And these ones over here, these are my assignments. Because some of us are friends with our assignments. Mm. We're trying to be close friends, close buddies with our assignments. Mm. God has assigned for you to be a light in their life, not for you to join them in gossip, not for you to join them in the works of darkness. No, they're an assignment, but you have to be strong enough. Hallelujah. Have to be strong enough to be even, to even be the assignment, not to conform to the assignments, That's lifestyle, um, environment, so conversations good. and blah, 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 blah. And so God will draw you away so that you can go back in. Is everyone with me today? So we don't call friends. And some of us may have to 
listen, may have to call certain friends and be like, you know what, I'm really sorry that, you know, I was, yeah, I was, I was doing a lot. I was being, I was doing too much. It's not about that. But in this season of my life, this is where healthy communication comes in. In this season of my life, I really believe that God is, is calling me to, but you be honest, you be truthful. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like be truthful, be in this season of my life. I know I can't engage in some of the things that we used to engage with before. Is everyone with me today? Yeah. Like I, I can't do that, but I'm here for you when you need me call me. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you do it with wisdom. Yeah. Like you just tell the truth. Tell the truth, That's Lord. Words. Like, listen, I'm in this season right now. Doesn't mean I don't love you, some people, but pray beforehand. We're spiritual people as well as human beings. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, God, touch their heart. Give them the heart to receive what I'm saying in this season. And sometimes, most of the time, people respect more that you say the truth that make up lies or excuses or you avoid. Everyone put friendship in the chat. So we are saying, Lord, give me the grace, reveal it to me, reveal it to me, reveal the people in my life. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. They respect your pursuit. They do. They respect your pursuit a lot more. I have friends that be like, no, you know what? I respect you, you know. You're still on this path. People I went college with, still on this path. And guess what? Now they come to the gathering. Now, wherever I'm doing, because they respect, they they respect, they will come to CMP. They will do all of this thing because they, res like, you know what? Susan followed through with what she said she was going to do. She's actually about this thing. When we were doing this, she refused to do it. Do you know, she stood on business when it came to holiness. My God. Susan wasn't afraid. Like, I'm praying for you. I, I do, it's, it has nothing to do with me where you're at. I just know I need to be obedient and send you a prayer in this moment. That's good. Does, yeah. Is everyone understanding what I'm saying? So this friendship thing, if God is highlighting it and he's been speaking on it all this time, it means that he knows it's important to you. And it's also important to him. Hallelujah. And where he's taking you. Hallelujah. So let's just begin to pray. Lord, give me the grace to pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord, give me the grace. Hallelujah. I'm just praying for the grace, Lord God. Lord, give us the grace. Hallelujah. To pursue righteousness, to pursue faith, pursue love, Yes, Holy Spirit, we are asking God the grace to pursue, to seek, hallelujah, yes, God, to run after, hallelujah, righteousness, love, and peace, hallelujah, God, hallelujah, help us to run from, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Rabasata Yadaba Seki Yadaba Yadaba Seki Yadaba Saka Yadaba Saka Give us the grace to live a holy life, God. Give us the wisdom necessary to identify the right friendships. Yeah, Holy Spirit, hallelujah, pour out afresh in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Yes, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes. yes. Give us the divine power. Give us the divine power. Divinely empower us, oh God. Hallelujah. Divinely empower us, Lord God, to flee. Hallelujah. To flee, oh God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus name Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah in Jesus name just as we were praying I just I this thing to do with relationships and stuff like that um the Lord um highlighted that there's some of you that like to be needed you enjoy being the strong one because it meets that desire or that fear mm. of being accepted or experiencing belonging. Mm. So you will burn yourself out. You will do everything for everyone else, but really deep down inside, this is your way. This is you performing or working so that you are not, so that you do not experience rejection, so that you do experience love, so that you do particular things. Jesus is Lord. We've idolized our strength. We've idolized our intellect. We've idolized the role of being the problem solver, being, being the person in the family that everyone runs to, or we've accepted it as an identity in our lives. But really deep down inside, there's a fear that if I am not this person that 
I have been positioned to be in the lives of so-and-so and so or X, Y, and Z, it means that I will be rejected. It means that I will not be loved the way that I'm meant to be loved. But that's not the definition of God's love. We don't, even with our relationship with God, in Ephesians um, one or two, I believe it says it says to Ephesians two, sorry, it speaks about that we can't earn salvation. It was given to us as a gift. So if when if we don't even need to perform or work in the context of a great God, a, a holy God that breathed the life into us, <laughs> that knows our beginning to the end, from the end. If even on our worst day, he calls us beloved, he calls us known. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Then why are we allowing this dynamic in our everyday lives? Mm. And I always say to people that God's love is a standard in my life, not only in how I extend love, but also how the dynamics should be between myself and people in terms of the positioning, like, am I performing here? And if I'm performing, it means that something is being sacrificed. And one of the key areas that are sacrificed is usually the relationship that you have with God. what he's called you to, what he's requiring you to do. I sense that in my spirit so strong, just a deep, a deep fear. I don't know um, if one person in particular, a particular relationship that you might be in um, with a guy or with a girl. I don't know, but just this bit that if I let go of this, it means that I will never dot, dot, dot. There's like this deep fear. You're the rescue, is it rescuee? Rescuer, rescuer, you rescue. And this is, this is a call for healing. Hmm. This, is, this is why this, this work that God is doing hmm. is going beyond hmm. the fast. The fast just brought things up. Hmm. The fast just revealed hmm. the condition of our hearts, the hmm. condition of our minds, the hmm. conditions. Like, do you understand? Like, there's things that it's just bringing it up so that we can deal with it. Remember last week we prayed, God, bring what is in the subconscious into the conscious mind. And the Holy Spirit is like, yeah, bet. Let's do it. So I have to be careful what you pray. Hallelujah. You have to decide, do I actually want to, because it comes with it. Hallelujah. So this is a call to healing. I just, I, I see this. I'm just seeing a picture, an image right now. When you were um, a little girl, like your nose weren't respected. Yes, God. I just see someone like you, the, your voice. Hallelujah. It wasn't, it, it wasn't accepted. But I just sense the Lord saying, I want to heal you. I want to heal you of the rejection you experienced when you said no, or the harm that was experienced when you said no. Mm. Is it really love if you have to perform to receive it? Mm. 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 Yeah, Holy Spirit, I'm trying to say it the way that I, I hear it. Yeah, Holy Spirit, 
I sense that so strongly right now. Just a sense of belonging, a sense of being seen, your dissatisfaction that you're looking for, that you're pursuing, that you're craving for is actually a deep need for belonging and acceptance and love. Holy Spirit, heal us. Holy Spirit, heal us. We repent for idolizing. Some of us have to, we have to release, we have to repent for idolizing and being and just being addicted to the um the words not celebration, but that comes with being in that position. Just hear the Holy Spirit just saying that, you know, receive, receive, keep yourself in my love. I want to heal you. You belong here. You are accepted by me. I'm going to try to uh, find this scripture. Beloved. No, that's not. Shake it. Just trying to find a specific. Just goes back to what PA was saying. So I'm going to go to chapter one as well. Shake it. One second, guys. Shake it. Maybe this is just your moment to just, as I um, get this scripture for you guys to just sit in that. To ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to minister. Yeah, just pray. Holy Spirit, just begin to minister to those people, God. Mm-hmm. Shikia la 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 ba sikia yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, it says God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Hmm. Salvation is not a reward. It's not you studying for exams and trying to... um, to get A's and be this perfect performing student in order for you to receive 
um, from the Lord. But we don't have to, we don't have to, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not any, our belief, our faith in Christ Jesus brings us. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted, hello, accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. I just want us to just begin to just to just pray. And Lord, I just I pray to that area of performance, God. I pray into that area of performance, God. Hallelujah. That that desire, that yearning. Hallelujah. That anxiety, God, which really is just a yearning. Uh, a sadness, Lord God, a, a deep sadness, Lord God, of or deep pain of rejection, God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I ask Holy Spirit that you will just minister to your children. Bring into remembrance, Holy Spirit, your truth. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's something God has showed me, and I'm just for some of you, just this in this area of of uh, youthful loss of porn and all of that type of stuff. I just really sense in my spirit the way God has shown it to me is that. It's almost that was a form of not only escapism, but in in a in a deep way, a, a way of, yeah, it was escapism, but a way of um disconnecting from the pain of rejection. In some ways, that lust tries to inform that you belong. Hmm. Hmm. And that's why God wants to heal at the root. Hmm. That's why your freedom is based on the, the ability to face your darkness for real, for real. As long as those roots are there, it, it's going to be very hard to pull away, but though there's the certain roots that need to be broken off through um through unpacking and facing darkness, dwelling in the love of God, it's a it's a peripheral or uh, an amalgamation of things. It's not just one thing. And I just sense that so 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 strong. So I want to say this to everyone and your your vice or your kryptonite may not be sexual stuff or whatever. It may look like overperformance. It may look like overworking. It may look like the pursuit of money. It may, whatever it may be, like there is, everyone has their kryptonite, right? Um, whatever it may be. But after this fast, we have to, we have to continue sweeping out the house. We have to we have to sweep out. We have to stop avoiding. We have to stop using Christian needs to cover up what's really going on. We have to stop preserving our um what's the word we have to stop preserving our personal brand and what we have to keep 
the accountability going. We have to keep the conversations going. We have to keep ourselves in the love of God. We have to keep walking in step with the spirit. We have to keep, we have to keep on guys. We have to sweep, sweep out the house. Jesus. Let's do this prayer point. I surrender this idol, wherever it may be in your life right now, wherever that looks like, whether it be your performance, your desire, whatever that looks like for you guys, I surrender this or I surrender this area of performance, this area. And, you know, you're overperforming, but really that's anxiety at play. And then behind the anxiety is exploring why. Why are you anxious? But God, I surrender this to you. Holy Spirit, heal me and pour out your love upon my heart. I surrender this thing. I surrender this area. Let's just begin to pray. Even just surrender. And you bring the bring her to you, God. Holy Spirit, here. I surrender it, Lord. I surrender from you, God. It has to be broken, Lord God. Then. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We ask for clean hands, Lord. We ask for pure hearts, O God. We ask for the grace to be the generation that seeks your face, O God of Jacob. Oh, Sibidi and Alamas, Taya. Clean hands, Lord, and pure hearts, O God. Oh, creating us a new heart, O God. Did Alaman Santa renew a steadfast spirit within us, O God? Restore to us the joy of salvation that we not, may not be deceived, Father God, by the fleeting pleasures of sin, O God. Restore unto a and T the joy of salvation that we might not be deceived by the defleeting pleasures of sin. Uphold us with a willing spirit that is ready, O God, to obey your will. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're still in the house, just type in pure hearts. Type in pure hearts, P.S. Really gave us a wonderful breakdown. Um, I mean, Ashley was just really breaking down things. I really felt 
based on what I was going to share today, that her highlight on lust, which is beyond sexual, as she said, cravings, desires, longings, um, thing after things that are forbidden. That if you have been following through this week, where well, I told you to read Ephesians this week, the first prayer that Paul gives to us is that light might enter into your hearts. Mm. 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 That the eyes of your understanding, so Paul says, understanding in the spirit has eyes. Now, we have to go back to the beginning of time in where sin first entered. Eve was affected by what she heard through the serpent and that made her see the tree that she saw every day differently. The, 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 the deception doctrine of the evil one averted her vision and that which she was not, would not attracted to became attractive. So there was, a, there was an agenda from the evil one. There was an agenda from the evil one. And the agenda of the evil one was that I want to pervert the eyes of a new thing, London. I want to distort their vision. I want to cause them to be double-minded. I wanted to, 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 to come on Sunday, but 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 still have allegiance to other things Monday to Saturday. I wanna I, I want them to say yesterday and tomorrow said, I want them just to be people who cannot choose to, and yield to the one thing. And if you've been listening over the last five months in church, you know, we've been echoing this one thing. You know, we've been echoing preparation. We've been echoing um, so many things. Like the list is endless, guys. And, and, and it comes all back to this base thing that the Lord has echoed in the last three weeks, which is the basic law of his temple is holiness. You see, when you pursue holiness, um, it makes you single-minded. Jesus said, if your eye be single, your whole body will be filled with light. Mm. Mm. If your eye be focused, if you be fixated on one thing, it will filter through everything. This is very interesting because he now says, if the eye is single, it's full of light. That light fills the whole body. We've been learning over the last couple of weeks about our bodies being the temple. So if there is an, a gate that the Lord wants us to consecrate in this hour, this is why on the last day, P.S. had to you know, iterate something we've been talking about for the last two weeks about this last thing, is because let's not be deceived, beloved. It doesn't just, the, the warfare doesn't just stop today. You know, Satan has schemes and plans and isms, you know, for you to be, not able to maintain what that God has freely given to you. The reality is our eye gates is the first entry point, our air gates, the first entry point for any type of idolatry to remain in our lives. What this fast was representing, guys, these 12 days of fasting, the number 12 speaks about governance. Government, sorry. God wants to reestablish his rule and authority in your life. Not only that, he wants to also equip you with the power to advance his kingdom. Governments have the agenda of advancing the law of the land. Another perspective that God was doing in this fast was lordship. God was, God was, God was saying to us plainly, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? He was after our complete allegiance and obedience to him. Lordship speaks about our foundation. Remember the parable? He who hears my words, once again, another gate, your heirs, and does what I say will be like a man or woman who built his house on the rock, on a strong foundation. So when we allow the Lordship of Christ into our lives, beloved, we are building foundations because God does not exempt us from hardship, from trial or temptation, but he does promise us that we will stand in those days of trial, hardship and temptation. And last but not least, it speaks about ownership. 
you read in the scriptures, your body was bought with a price. You are no longer your own. <laughs> Let us just deep that for a second. God owns you. He bought you. There was an exchange and he bought you with his precious blood. Hmm. I want us to have on this last day of fasting an understanding of what was the mind and the agenda of God. And through these three things, government, lordship, and ownership, because of God, God's God's not a tyrant, amen. He's not some somebody or some, you know, some 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 guy that just wants to, you know, strut his way around. He's a father. He doesn't just deal with the fruit, he deals with the root. Therefore, healing. Therefore, exposing the hidden things. Therefore, I'm not just going to say, why are you producing bananas when you're supposed to produce apples? I'm going to cut off that branch that's producing bananas in life and I'm going to prune the roots. I'm going to prune those areas of your life. We ought to bring in bare fruit that reflects who I called you to be. So, so God in his kindness will, will lovingly deal with the things that are really trapping us, guys, which is why confession was necessary. And I encourage you, and big up all of you that have confessed. If you still need to confess, beloved, there is freedom. And there is also healing in your confession. So I have one prayer point. I just thought it was key just to bring context to what God is doing and what God has done and what is promised to us. And we're going to read Ephesians 1, 17 to 18. If somebody can just copy and paste the NLT version in the chat. I want you from this day forward until further notice to make this a daily prayer point. That's type in the comment section daily. Ephesians 1, 17 to 18 in the NLT version. Hmm. Beloved, <laughs> let this fast tell you that the pursuit of holiness is not seasonal. It's not 12 days a and fast, seek first. I've, this fast was supposed to re kickstart a daily lifestyle of prayer and being in the word. Come on, type daily. Daily. Yeah. What happened in these last 12 days is that you realize that if you can commit yourself to doing stuff daily that is godly, that there's a power that rises within you that's able to resist the temptation of the flesh. Am I lying? If I'm not lying, tell me, tell me, tell me I'm not lying in the comment section. Like, like, have you not surprised yourself? In these last twelve days, I know I have. Ha, huh, brother, I, I know I have. I know that this these last twelve days that we might just treat as a season and go back to normal Monday, which would be a big mistake. Hmm. Big mistake. That this is a standard, a foundation on which we build upon. So when God is calling you, telling you. Called you to be a minister, called you to be a leader. You will write songs for me. You, I will send. Well, I, I've raised the like, like understand. He's speaking the end from the beginning. You will not see it now, but God has put stuff in you in seed form. That as you steward time, as you practice His principles daily. You will reap up, you will become the thing that you don't really think or believe God is saying that you are. This fast was a reset, guys. And when you reset something, it's not the same as it was before. It's a, it's a clean slate. Come, guys, Lord, it's, the Lord is saying it is a clean slate. It is a clean slate. Don't let no friend come to your Monday and remind you about the Anna. Of 12 days ago, that Anna is dead. Don't let no enemy come to you on Monday and remind you, Claudia, of the of, of the Claudia of 12 days ago. She is dead. Don't let Bolu anybody come to you on Monday. Let me, no, let me even say Saturday and remind you of the Bolu of 12 days ago. That Bolu is dead. Hmm. Dead. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Clean slate, guys. Michael Sebrebe Kotaya. Clean slate. 
The Bible says in Romans 6, reckon yourselves dead unto sin. I don't care if you don't feel it. Mm -mm. Reckon it. Except Marco Sebrapata. This is your you, this is your confession, your reality, your truth, if we can say that. The truth. That old person is dead. But let's not deceive ourselves. It took work, aka obedience, aka yielding, aka daily, just showing up and saying, God, today help me fast again. <laughs> <laughs> for you to allow an ancient truth to become a present day reality and I want to encourage you it does not stop now this fast was a foundation mm. 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 chapter 1 because time is gone don't want to preach <laughs> and keep your head to 8 o'clock 17 to 18 remember what I was saying guys when God it's addressing the lust. He's addressing that the enemy was after the eye gate of a Newfoundland. Hmm. Hallelujah. You know, hmm. let me stay on track. I'm asking God, Ephesians 1, 17, 18, and NLT here, by the way. I'm asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you a Newfoundland, the spiritual wisdom, a spirit of wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. I am praying that your hearts will be filled with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are rich and glorious inheritance. Who are, sorry, who are his rich and glorious you see you see you know why this fast and what we've been preaching the last few weeks can be quite heavy you know we're going to be real about it is that god paid for something he paid for you uh, redemption is that he he brought you back from the depth from the darkness into the light he paid a price he died and he died because of your sin and he died and through his blood, he made you righteous and holy. So, so, so for God, he won't let up when he sees his glorious inheritance below what he paid for. This is where we see the pursuit of God and his energy. Where he's like, no, 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 no. I didn't pay for you to be going back and forth in this sin. I I'm so sorry, though, love it. I called you to be holy. I didn't pay for you to be dilly dallying about what you're going to do. What I'm saying, I, I didn't pay for that. I, I didn't pay for, for for you to think, mate, to 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 to, to consider. And I, I paid for you to say yes. So, so, so the heaviness of the word of the in this season, which should produce in us a fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, hmm. and to turn away from evil, hmm. is that God has so much more for you guys there is a wisdom there is a revelation there is a, a, a light that's going to enter into your hearts that that which tastes good which was evil will now become like rubber in your mouth and, and, and that which you thought was long and and corny and a bit too much like you know like calm down jesus saved us hallelujah you, you, the radicalness the joy of the salvation because some of us in this season have forgotten that it's, it's, you're supposed to be a, a happy person if you're saved. David said, happy is the man who sins the Lord counts not against him. That man must be the most joyful person on the planet because he sins. His wrongdoing, his evil desires, his longings, the Lord has forgiven him of it. We should be the most joyful people on the planet. Yet Christians are known to be Anyway, that's not our confession today. Hallelujah. I hope you don't hear me today. I hope you got to hear me today. If, if being a Christian has become such burdensome, if it's robbing you of enjoyment of life, my beloved, we might be following the wrong pattern. Hmm. 
We might not be drinking deep of the spirit of God. Hmm. We might not have our gaze really fixed on him. Hmm. We, we might have come to Jesus with another agenda. Hmm. We, we, we might be really upset with God because we're believing a God that's not really real, guys. I hope anything you hear me today. So today, <laughs> we're praying that God's light will fill the eyes of our hearts. Hmm. There is an understanding that's coming to you, Tossa. There's an understanding that's coming to you, Bim. There's an understanding that's coming to you, Alex. Leke, there is a new understanding that is going to shift the perspective of your life. I'm telling you guys, if we can allow this to be a daily prayer point, your spiritual paradigm, it will shift. So right now, we're making a decree that Lord give unto me the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation. Lord, let the eyes of my heart be filled with light that I may possess understanding. Let us quickly pray today, a &T, in Jesus' name. Father, I prophesy over this house this morning that we are receiving a spirit of wisdom we are receiving a spirit of revelation that we might grow in the knowledge of you. Lord, I speak and I release the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of understanding and the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might and the spirit of strength and the spirit of the fear of the Lord on this heart. May my eyes be filled with light. Lord, we refute and we refuse the spirit of this age, oh God, that comes to deceive us out of the love of God, out of the peace of God, and out of the, the, the joy of the Lord. That they were decreeing that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Every tie of worldliness and ungodliness that is infiltrating the eyes of our understanding. I come against the spirit of this age that seeks to infiltrate our lives with ignorance. Today we decree we will not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, but at least knowledge. I release understanding. I release wisdom. Now, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. God, I decree that this house is coming under your authority. It's coming under your government. It's coming under your lordship. We are accepting ownership that you own this body. Lord, I decree it now in the name of Jesus. We are coming under the covenants of the Holy Spirit. Lord, my prayer of deliverance over this house is that we will be delivered from the vices of the spirit of this age that teaches us and nurtures us in the things of ungodliness. Right? Marco I prophesy right now over the minds of A&T, wherever the influence, the seeds, the structures, the pillars of the spirit of this age is possessing your life. I command it now to and to loose of its hold in the name of Jesus. And I begin to replace it with the governance of Yahweh. Begin to unravel, begin to shake, begin to break, begin to destroy, and cut down every other wooden images, idols. God, speak to the imprint of lust right now. Yes, Jesus. Speak to images in the mind right now. Even other people are trying to pray, but there's images in their mind of the old thing. I plead the blood of Jesus and I command it blood to wash away every image of perversion right now, every image of Michael, the empty Salamantaya. I want you to leave now 
in the name of Jesus. Be engraved and carved in the minds of your people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Antaya, we're tearing down your heart, your hold right now. Lord, as they repent, let this repentance begin to open up the spirit of God to bring deep renewal of the mind, the mind, the deep renewal of the mind right now. Come on. Rebe so we renounce every tire, the passion of lust, every tire of craving, every evil desire and longing, Lord, every hunger that is for things that are forbidden, drive every addiction. Oh, Jesus, we break this hold now in the name of Jesus. I will so in Jesus name in Jesus name just repeat after me I so prepare for the canto I am a hunde ke be hika da ba ho so repeta peli peli pano so prapa te be 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 prapanto se de kanta da mantaya and if you struggle in your mind I am a if when you comes to prayer all of these images come to your mind I am my mind. These can be impure images, lustful images. These can also be images of the fantasy of you, just, you know, daydreaming about realities that aren't necessarily real. If, if you come to prayer and your mind begins to be bombarded with images, I want you to place your hand on your head right now. Oh, and if you know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, just pray in the Holy Ghost with me for one minute. Ba ka and we're gonna just conduct some prayer and deliverance even right now. Le ba so ke ka dan to si ba dan sataka. Isa mandi di edeni. Ali kanu so te ke mi de ka dan te ke ne feli kuntaya. Ali se ne feli kumban ta ka da ka dan de sa di kun so pa kan te feli. Manto ha te ke ni se no 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 na na sakara manto. Aya baba. Yes, Jesus. Repeat after me, I renounce. So I renounce. I'm placing hands on your head as you do this. I renounce every graven image, every lustful, fantasizing image. Oh, but I renounce my tie. I renounce my longing. Marco, I renounce my desire for it. I renounce it now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I choose to repent of dwelling on the things of carnal nature. Father, I repent from pondering, receiving, or even yielding to these thoughts and vices of the flesh. And right now, Father, in accordance to your word, I replace my mind to think on the things of the Spirit. Whatsoever is lovely, good, sound, worthy of praise, of a good report. Whatsoever things that are spiritual, yeah, Colossians 3 says, things that are set above in the heaven. Lord, I pray that I replace my mind with a heavenly mindset. Mm. And even now, Father, I decree by the grace of God and through faith in Jesus Christ that right now, as we have renounced, repent, and replace, Father, I speak an infilling, and even now, of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. I speak over their eye gate right now. I speak over their minds right now. I speak over their imagination. Yeah, 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 yeah. I speak over their psyche. I go into the unconscious and the subconscious areas of their minds right now. 
may it be filled with light that cometh through the understanding of your word. I make this decree right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, Ephesians 1, 17 to 18 every day. If you're still with me, just type amen in the comment section. Last but not least, the reason why I gave you guys Ephesians this week, guys, is because I don't want this fast to center around deliverance. What am I saying here? I don't want your focus to be, I need to be delivered. I don't want your focus. It's a part of the agenda. I want it to be the focus. Listen to me carefully. Don't want it to be the focus, the one thing. The one thing that you should be looking forward to is walking in your inheritance. The book of Ephesians reveals to us who God did, who God is, sorry, what he did. Come on. High color. It reveals to you your identity. It, it reminds you that you have an inheritance that's available for you, Tossan, right now. Mo, there is things that you can enjoy in God that is meant for this side of eternity right now. It, it, it reminds us to put off the old man. It, it, it reminds us of spiritual authority in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it reminds you to honor your parents. It, it reminds you about the fact you have the armor of God. Hmm. It is reminding you of who you are this fast. Though we need to be delivered for some things that are blocking us from walking in the things, no problem, we'll deal with that. Small thing. The focus must be the one thing. Jesus. When your eyes are gazed on him, you receive in fullness all that he has for you. A life of freedom, a life of joy, a life of righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Is everyone following me here today? Because we can idolize deliverance. Hello? We can idolize the need for I, PA must lay hands on me tonight. Or PS must prophesy to me tonight. And think that that is the thing that's going to set me free. Beloved, some of you might not get laid on hand tonight. And I'm telling you, if, you, if your gaze is on him, you are and you will be delivered. I said you are and you will be delivered. Catch that in your spirit, man, this morning. It is possible. It is possible. Let's, let's, let's be real today. I ain't got time to, to, to play church. I don't know what you get. I'm, huh? Let's be real. Let's be real. You can idolize the powers of your bloodline. You, you can settle for, you know, this is how it is because my, my, my great grandma, you know, the, everyone, else. my beloved, that is not your story. Leke said that we have been redeemed. The bloodline has shifted. Yes, we will pray out something at the bloodline because we're responsible people of God that will deal with real things that are happening in real time. But, but our focus is not that. And why is that not our focus? Because we have the power right now to block that. The, the whole essence of what we were talking about with deliverance, guys, was that we are trying to remind you that though it was your portion of your mother and your father, because of Christ, it's no longer your portion. And you now, even right now, you have the power to even conduct self-deliverance from the things of old in your life. Jesus has and will change it all. That's right, Natalie. Hmm. I said he has, so he's already done. I said that he will. I'll be walking it and accept it and receive it. We'll see the benefit of it. So I'm going to read Ephesians 1 again, but from 19 to 23. That's to reinforce my statements today so far. He said, I also pray that you will understand. Right in the comment section, understand. You see what Paul was doing here, yeah? Paul was highlighting to A&T that it's possible to receive from God through salvation all of these promises, but not live it out in this life because you are void of understanding. Listen, listen, listen. Solomon said, Wisdom is the principal thing. So, so, so it's wise to be saved. But in all thy get, so getting, get understanding. 
He knew that it's one thing to possess what wisdom is and looks like. It's another thing, beloved, to get an understanding of how to operate wisdom in your life. Guys, there are dimensions to God. Hello? There is growth in God. Hello? There are new things to discover in God. Hello? You need understanding. Wisdom builds a house, but understanding establishes it. So Paul keeps saying, I want you guys to receive the power to understand. Because once you understand, it becomes easy to apply. Once you understand, it becomes, it, 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 it becomes second nature. Once you understand, you no longer become a fool who, who's, who's, who's accepting, you know, you know, small, small, small. You understand that you are worthy of much. I hope you everyone here is understanding me this morning. I pray that you will understand the greatness, the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. So guess what? God's power, greatness, immeasurable power gets activated in your life when you choose to believe him. So guess what? I get delivered when I believe that I am delivered. Hmm. I get delivered when I believe that I am delivered. You know, it takes faith to say something that you don't feel right. It takes faith to confess things that's not actually real right now. What does the Bible say? Let the poor say I am rich. Let the weak say I am strong. God understands that the frame of your world, God understands that the, that the, the creative power through your confession can shift the trajectory of your lives, guys. Hmm. We'll teach about that another day. To reinforce my statement again, he says here, Paul, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Wow. This power that God wants us to understand that is available for those who believe hmm, is the same power that raised Christ from the grave. Wow. Wow. And it's the same power that seated Christ at the right hand in heaven. Wow. And, and right now, Christ is far above any ruler. Hmm. This is the part that we need to hear me today. Authority, hmm. power, leader, or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. For God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. God is greater than your bloodline. Let's write that in the comment section for me. God is greater than your bloodline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Evil has power, but God's power is greater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Evil has prospered, but God's prosperity shall even prosper more in your life. God, guys, I said God is greater than your bloodline. Hmm. Right now, God, Jesus, is seated far above rulers, authorities, powers. Hmm. Interesting. So when Ephesians 6 says today that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So auntie, so uncle, so all the people, guys, that, that committed covenants with evil spirits, they're not our enemies. That's our family. Satan hijacked their priesthood, hijacked their ability to make covenant with things that were evil rather than godly. It's okay. We forgive them. They're not our enemy. He says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, spiritual hosts of wickedness. And where are they? In heavenly places. But my verse just told me, Christ, who is in me, the hope of glory, is seated far above. Hello? Can we exalt Jesus this morning? Can we exalt our King of Kings? Is it okay even now? And have a praise break that our God is far above 
I want to echo the lordship, the governance of God this morning. His power is far above. You get time excited, guys. Because we get to power by focusing on that which is evil. God has conquered the grave. Hmm. God has defeated the power of sin. When he rose from the grave, he said, Isle is possible to overcome. I'm telling you guys, whatever lust addiction in your life, but today be reminded it is possible to overcome. So what's my prayer today? I want you to believe what I'm saying. I want it to be a hype moment. Or just me hair shouting my head off because I'm excited because Jesus is so good. I want it to be your heavenly reality. That because that power that raised Christ from the dead, by it is my divine right to receive that power to overcome this cinema. Come on. It is my divine right that I have power to destroy altars and cut down wooden images and break down the pillars of evil in my bloodline. Come on. It's because of that power that I have authority to say it stops with me. I am a new creation. I want the prayer, it's the last prayer prayer, we're going to go, I know, it's, I know it's late now. I want the prayer to be that, Lord, help me to understand the greatness of your power for us who believe. Father, I pray right now that a &T will possess the understanding. Hmm of the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. God, help our unbelief this morning. If there's something, Lord, I want you to deliver me from God, is deliver me from unbelief. Deliver this house from double-mindedness, oh God. Yes, Jesus. Deliver this house from, um, Lord, help our unbelief, oh God. Father, some of us, the unbelief is rooted because the struggle has been for so long. It's hard to envision a future without it, oh God. Father, remind us that through the power and the blood of Jesus, in a single moment in time and in eternity, you can shift us from darkness to light. You can break out the hold of those things in our lives and bring us into eternal freedom remind us of the gospel of jesus christ that you came to set the captives free. so therefore i decree over this house we are going to pursue and, pers and, and possess an understanding of the immeasurable great power you have towards us who believe in you and we ask today that you will deliver us from any ounce of unbelief in our hearts that like that man of the sun, oh God, he said, Lord, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. Would you purify the unbeliefs in our hearts today? May tonight be a night of demonstration, a, a night where, we, where it be a monument, where we will remember the God of power, my call the God of authority, the God who is seated in heavenly places. We decree this now over a new thing, London. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's give God an amen. Even when you want, let's just give God a hallelujah. Like, like, let's open our mouths and say hallelujah to Jesus. Hall praise is a weapon, guys. It sends confusion to your enemy's camp. We're going to praise God today. We're going to praise God tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But yes, guys, let's be on time tonight. We're going to start at seven. So remember, guys, earlier is on time. On time is late. Amen. And I want to encourage you all, please, Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 19. I want you to pray it, meditate upon it. I want you guys to remember we have the armor of God. We're not coming tonight in fear. We're not coming tonight in, oh, my gosh, what's going to uh, No, we're coming tonight to conduct heavenly business. We're coming tonight with an excitement. We're coming tonight with our eyes fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you can, I want to urge you, fast till 6 p.m., we'll have some food for you guys to eat when you get there, if you're on time or early. But I love you all. I'm praying for you all. Um, and God bless you. And well done. You made it to 12, day 12. To 12 days? Yeah, day 12. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Tom. Please, and pray for me and P.S. Let's pray our strength. Hallelujah. And pray for my son, AJ. Amen.